guys, got the frame stripped, and I'm moving the Mazda, moving it into Dirt Garage. Not uh, my buddy Clinton's channel, but uh, a little garage that I get to use for a little bit just to finish building it. Should be good. Oh yeah, in the Dirt Garage. Well, I guess it's Pebble, Pebble Garage, that's what we'll call it. But uh, this, that is so nice. Because with that, I can finish all the body mounts and everything. I can weld up the frame, uh, put those gusset or the yeah the block off plates in there. Build my shock hoops. Um, you can get the steering box relocated forwards. I've been thinking about it. I might actually try to acquire a Dodge half rad, um, like out of the like it's like O3 and newer that generation body style, anyways. Uh, the 318 trucks, the gas trucks, they have a half rad and uh, it might be like here to here so it would it would be out of the way of the steering box because that needs to come forwards um, to fix that issue. My tie rod is directly below my drag link and that's not going to work. So anyways, yeah, I'm glad I got it moved in here. Yeah, do a little bit of cleanup, but yeah, there's there's still a lot to do on it, but it's going to be uh, a lot easier now that I've got a roof over my head and no, uh, no freaking rain on me anymore. It's going to be so nice. This thing was a little bit of a bear to move. Frick, definitely need to clean up. Um, a little bit of a bear to move, and I was a little bit nervous about it rolling down the hill, so I had that uh, big stump there, right about there, to catch it in case it ran away, but it didn't. Um, I was able to control it with the huge freaking paddles on the tires. These things got so much grip. It's like, uh, handles all over the place. Oh, I'm so excited. So yeah, she's got 37s now. And, uh, yeah, I'm super pumped. Super pumped. Well guys, working on the e-locker project, um, this is some, some top secret stuff going on here. <laughs> uh, I got that recessed, that's pretty good clearance there. Um, I was messing around with the preload on this because it was a bit sloppy. Uh, accidentally over tightened it, crushed the crush sleeve a little bit too much, and uh, ended up taking it all apart, which is a good thing because these are just wallered right out. All the bearings are just thundered. So I'm going to be doing a uh, bearing kit on it. But uh, I was hoping to get this in last night, but uh, yeah, it's a good thing I didn't put it in. <laughs> I would have been taking it out again anyways. But uh, this top secret stuff, pretty neat. <laughs> Can't wait to show you guys what that does. A lot, a lot of you guys will actually be able to figure it out. <laughs> well guys, back at the Mazda. Not a sponsor. Definitely should be. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways. <laughs> Under here. Okay. So, e locker. This thing earlier this morning at work, um, I made a quick video about this thing. I ended up having to tear it completely apart. Um, all the bearings are just shot on it. The pinion shot. Um, the bottom bearing, the inner one for the pinion. Uh, I was cleaning up the threads on the pinion where the nut goes on and uh, tipped it upside down and the freaking pinion bearing slid. Those are supposed to be pressed on. So um, this is getting the gear set that was in that spare diff in the box of the Toyota parts truck. So this one's getting all new everything. And then uh, when I'm ready for it, I'm going to be doing the e-locker in the rear as well. And I'll have to take those gears out and put them into the e-locker, the other one for the rear. So going to have a little bit of downtime with the truck in that. 
uh, which kind of sucks. Um, I was hoping to be able to not have to do that. I was hoping that these gears were good, um, but unfortunately they are not. But anyways, uh, I got this in here right now for mockings up purposes. I got to come up with some kind of armor bracket that comes off the side for my actuator, um, the AOR or analog off-road air actuator mod. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you guys will have seen that little cylinder coming off there. Uh, I need to come up with some kind of bracket to, to guard it underneath as well as uh, some of the face. Um, so I'm just trying to come up with a, a rough visual and some measurements. But, uh, yeah, I also kind of messed up. You'll notice these two holes. Let's see. Oh, shadow. They don't line up. Where am I? There I am. That one is more inbound. I had the gasket upside down. For some reason, I marked this one, like when I initially laid the gasket on here and uh, was welding and, and building everything up when I first started building this. Um, I had the gasket on properly last night when I drilled all these holes, well, all of them. I drilled that one, the bottom one, and then these two and tapped them. I had the gasket upside down, so... I didn't bother with that one. I didn't center punch that hole for some reason. So I did that last night with the gasket upside down. This hole is lined up with this hole. So I have to bring my welder here on Thursday, fill in that hole and then re-drill and tap it properly. So now I know, now I know. Top hole is the outboard one. Bottom hole is more inboard, but uh, yeah. When this thing was apart, I took the opportunity to clean and primer and paint it. Um, we were doing some stuff at work that needed the uh, the one room really warm, so the primer and the paint both cured very fast. I freaking love it. Within two hours, I was able to handle this. It's like, it's done. It's done. But um, yeah, lots, lots to do still. Still got to come up with uh, engine mounts, but I need to get the uh, dummy engine in place to do that but uh, it won't be tonight I'm I'm pretty beat <laughs> another thing that I gotta do is uh, build motor or uh, body mounts so that's high up on the list of stuff to do once the body's mounted solid then I can start running brake lines and and fuel lines and all that stuff so I can't really do any of that before I get the body mounted, but I got to get the body mounted so that, no, how does it go? Body gets mounted, brake lines, fuel lines run, and then I can put the engine and trans in because it's going to be a huge pain in the butt to uh, run the lines and stuff where I need them with the engine and stuff in. So I might as well just do it while it's out, but uh yeah, I'm thinking the rear's not going to, or the front's not going to come down enough, so I'm probably going to have to add some of those Mazda springs to the rear, which means stiffer, but it's the price you pay. I'm not too worried about it. So, yeah, I got to finish welding everything uh, when I get the welder here on Thursday. Yeah, I am so freaking excited for this truck. You guys have no idea. It's finally coming together. <laughs> well guys, back out at Pebble Garage. <laughs> I was working on the Mastic quite late last night. I uh, had to get the welder working. That was a bit of a run around, but um, I got it. I got it working. I'll show you guys what I ended up doing last night. Okay, so I got the e-locker housing mounted up. It is completely bolted in. Um, it's not tightened down or anything, but all the bolts are in. Kind of hard to see with all that freaking light behind. Let's see if I can fix that. There, I think that's a little bit better. Um, anyways, when I got the gasket, double check that. When I got the gasket, I set it up on the thing. I wound a couple of the bolts in. And then I center punched the holes and I drilled them out and then I tapped them. 
Um, these two holes need to go in extremely straight. Um, they go through a large chunk of the housing. And uh, when I drilled them, I had the leaf spring plate down and the leaf spring was tight and everything. And um, the bottom one drilled fairly straight. The top one did not because my drill was hitting on the side of leaf spring. So my hole was all cantered off to the side. Um, so yeah, I was out here till 1030 working on this thing last night. When I, what I ended up doing was I lifted the the u-bolts or uh, unbolted the u-bolts lifted the plate off and actually used my pry bar to shift the spring out of the perch and move it over um i weld up those holes we used a neat little trick with a piece of brass uh, you put the piece of brass behind the hole if it's a through hole and then uh, you aim your welding uh, wire right into the center of that and uh, because you can't weld steel to brass um, it just builds up on it and then uh, once it catches up on the housing you just full sand and then uh, you just pop this off and you got a completely filled hole <laughs> it was a neat little trick so anyways I filled up those holes um, and then I actually mounted this in with a bunch of the bolts and then I uh, used my drill <laughs> another thing I did I uh, used my lathe to make a uh, perfect transfer punch out of a uh, an old drill bit um, so if you guys are ever curious the uh, hole size that Toyota uses on these is I think it's 21 64th yeah Let's see if I can get it in the light 21 64th. So I stuck this in, gave her a good whack. Um, I used my other 21 64th, which is somewhere. I think this guy here. Yeah, that's the one. Used that to do a, a little spot drill. And then uh, I went in with my proper size drill. I don't even know where it is right now. It was really late, late, late night last night. Um, and then I drilled those holes out and I used the housing as a reference to keep it straight. So, long story short, this is mounted. It's good to go. Um, now I just got to get that bearing kit and rebuild it and then uh, set it up. But I'm not going to be doing that. I'm actually uh, talking with a shop right now. Same guys that did the, head or the, the heads on the, uh, the Forerunner job. Uh, see if they want to set the diff up for me because I don't have good luck with setting up diffs. I just Yeah, not good luck with it. So anyways e-locker it's in So that's very exciting I was also thinking about how I was going to tackle the body mount situation and I have figured that out too What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the brackets off the frame and uh Build new ones. I'm going to start off with a piece of uh, flat flat stock. I'm going to undo all the Mazda body mounts because they're all rotten. Someone's coming. Sounds like Sean. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to take the Mazda body mounts off. I got to get a, a body lift kit though. Um, so I'll put the body lift kit on. I'll bolt that plate that I'm going to make to the body lift kit and then I can get it lined up and then uh, once it's welded to the frame then I can build the sides for it and all the reinforcements and stuff but I definitely definitely want to use the Toyota mounts because like my buddy Kyle was saying it's easier to use off the shelf parts instead of making custom stuff so if I utilize the Toyota mounts and a body lift kit it should be pretty easy to do 